Hey guys, just want to talk to you about our new Alco Engine reflux stills. These reflux stills are solidly built out of pure copper. Um, they're so, so easy to use and they're great for making pure neutral spirit. So where you want to make something like vodka, they're, they're perfect. Or if you want to use a neutral, make a neutral spirit base, which you can then flavor into other alcohols. It's great for making things like uh, gin, or you can flavor um, the neutral spirit into your own whiskies or bourbon or, um, or even other liqueurs like uh, Frangelico or Baileys or something like that, for instance. Um, yeah, the thing I like about these particular designs is just how reliable and easy, e easy they are to use. Um, this design, compared to a lot of other designs on the market, don't require you to fiddle around with the water flow at all. So you basically get the coolant water, you put it in, turn it on, and that's about it. You don't have to worry about fiddling around with coolant water. So when you want run one of these stills, uh, it's very much a hands-off process, I guess. Once you set it up, you just check the temperatures at the, at the start, uh, you throw away your heads, you start collecting spirit, and then at the end, you just cut it off before the tails start coming out. And that's it, so it's so, so easy to use. Somebody who's never distilled before can get fantastic results out of this still, and highly recommend it to anybody giving the craft a shot. Okay, so when you get the still, uh, you basically are gonna get the main still body like this. You're gonna get a probe thermometer, uh, just like that, or a pocket thermometer, some people call them. You get the spirit collection tube, which is made out of copper. Uh, then there's two inserts that look, uh, look like this. They're two little uh, brass inserts. One has a one millimeter hole, one has a 0.6 millimeter hole. Um, so you need to uh, yeah, uh, hold on to those. And you've got the ball valve like this. So how to put it together is you'll see on the side of the still here, you just get the ball valve and um, that basically screws uh, straight into this side here. Now you've got to make sure you've got a bit of Teflon tape on the ball valve first. Um, so you screw that in there like that. It doesn't have to be ridiculously tight. There's not really any pressure build up on this device. So um, yeah, just screw it in like so. Then you get the inserts. Now there's two different inserts. The, 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 the one millimeter insert will allow spirit to come out at a faster rate. Uh, however, um, you'll find that the, you'll, you'll get a low, lower purity. And then we've got a 0.6 millimeter insert, uh, which restricts the flow a little bit. And that 0.6 millimeter hole right in the middle really slows the flow down. Uh, so it'll take longer to do your spirit collection run, but you'll get a much, much higher purity when you do that. So um, I generally, I'll use a one millimeter for a stripping run, let's say. Let, let's say if I'm gonna do a double distillation, I'll use the one millimeter for a stripping run, and then I might use the 0.6 for my final cut. So I might do something like that. So anyway, get one of those. Uh, I've got, already got the Teflon tape on the one millimeter, so I'm just gonna screw that in. So screw that straight into the ball valve. Now when you look at the insert, uh, also note that there's a little hole on one side of the insert like this. You can sort of see it, see it right there. That hole must be facing in the vertical or up direction. So when I screw that in like that, you can see it's now facing upwards like so. Um, and uh, that little hole, what it is, is a little breather hole. So when spirit runs through here, it means that um, the, uh, the, any sulfides which are coming out in the spirit have a, a, the ability to escape into the atmosphere. So it just imp helps improve the quality of the final collected spirit. Uh, once you've got that on, then you've just got this, uh, the, the, the collection tube. We're just gonna screw that on like so. Once again, doesn't have to be that tight. I might just get a spanner and just give a little nip with a spanner just to make sure it's uh, sealed. So it's got a little compression fitting in there. And that's about it. Once I've done that, then I can just bend this copper tube to the shape I want. Um, and depending on where you've got your glass uh, container sitting or your stainless steel container to collect your spirit, you may want to bend this in a different fashion. Um, and that's pretty much it. On the input and output of the water fittings here, this is where the coolant water comes in. Um, it doesn't matter where, which one the coolant goes into or out of, um, as long as it just comes in and goes out. So uh, actually I've got another still here where I actually bought some hose fittings from Bunnings and this is not a bad way to set it up either. So I've got a short bit of hosing and then I've got a hose quick disconnect. So this keeps it the still a little bit tidier having a quick disconnect fitting on the actual barbs. They're not included, but you can definitely buy these at any hardware store pretty easily. All right. Okay, so I thought I'd explain a little bit about how the reflux process actually works in these reflux stills. So what I've got is a, a little uh, side or a bit of cross-sectional diagram here. And this is one of our reflux stills. At the top here, you can see we've got our copper condenser. So this big copper coil right there. 
Um, we've got the shut off ball valve, which is just there, and that's the one with the black tap, which you can see on the still when you look at it. Uh, the little flow restrictor device in here, that's with the point. Uh, the 0.6 millimeter or the one millimeter hole. And then you've got this little sort of elbow or cup here, which catches uh, the spirit as it falls down. Um, so that's pretty much how this still is set up. Now, if you, if, you, if you think about the process, what's first happening is you've got the vapor, which is coming out of the boiler and it's entering at the bottom of the still here. So you've got this gas or vapor, which is coming up here. It just uh, rises through all the packing. So you've got all the packing in the middle of the middle of the still here. That's uh, stainless steel and copper packing in our, in our still. Um, so that goes up here and eventually it hits this very cold copper coil, which you've got cold water running through, and then the vapor condenses on this. So if you've got very cold water, you'll find that the, the vapor will condense just on the bottom part of this coil. Once your coolant water starts to heat up, if you're recirculating your coolant water from a tank or something like that, you may find that the, it starts condensing a little bit higher. And if your water's really too hot, um, then what happens is you can actually lose some vapor out the stop at the top of the still here. So if you can smell a spirit smell out the top of the spill, there's a, there's a small chance that maybe your water needs to be a bit cooler. So usually if your coolant water exceeds 38 degrees Celsius or approximately 100 degrees Fahrenheit, that could be an issue. So it's just important to remember as well. But yeah, for most of you guys using the still, the, the, the spirit will condense all on this uh, part of the copper here. And then what will happen is um, you'll find that it's almost like you'll get rain at the at, from this coil. So it'll start like dripping down like this and uh, dripping back down onto the packing. Now, a lot of that spirit will actually enter this little cup that we have uh, made here, this little elbow. And we've got some sort of bits of wire which will direct the flow into this uh, little hole. Um, so yeah, you'll find that the spirit will come down, fall into this cup, and some of it will overflow back down on the packing like that. So only a, a small percentage will come out and exit the still, and the majority of it will fall back down on the packing. So that ratio of how much exits and how much falls back down on the packing is known as the reflux ratio. So if we had 100% uh, reflux ratio, nothing would actually come, come out of the still. So if we've got this ball valve closed, everything's just overflowing and we've got a 100% reflux ratio. And that would give us very, very high purity at the top here, but we wouldn't be getting any spirits. So it'd make the whole process um, pointless. Um, now, when you actually leave the still for a few minutes, um, uh, and it starts to form a bit of an equilibrium and you get uh, sort of like a gradient of different concentrations of spirit in the still. So where you get the vapor first coming up at the bottom of the still, you can see here we'll have 20%, not very strong vapor just coming in here and probably a little bit of that condenses on the packing over here. And then as you go up the still, the purity starts to increase as you, as you reach the azeotrope. Um, so the azeotrope is basically the maximum level, which is actually about 95.5 or 96% at the top here is what the theoretical maximum you can get uh, for the purity of uh, alcohol and water mixed together. Um, but um, yeah, what, you have, what happens in the still is you get these fractions starting to form and the, uh, th this type of gradient of different strengths of spirit in here is really what we're trying to maintain in one of these columns. So if we pulled out like if we completely opened this ball valve and if we took out this flow restrictor device, what would happen is we would get all of this 94 come out of the still, now it exit straight away, and then we'd get the weaker um, sort of percentages of spirit starting to exit the still, and that would be no good. So we need to keep a reflux ratio where a reasonable or a large percentage of the alcohol is form, got falling back on the packing and that sort of continuing to maintain this gradient um, in, the, in, in the still column here. The colors that I've drawn are also sort of uh, to show that the bottom of the still here is the hottest part and it gets cooler at the top. So uh, at the top here, this is gonna be very, very close to the boiling point of alcohol around about you know, your 70, 77 to 80 degrees, somewhere in the top here. And as you get down into the bottom of the still, this is going to be close to 100 degrees down the bottom here. So um, that's more or less what's happening, I guess, uh, and the science behind it. Um, yeah, and that's one of the reasons why we're trying to restrict the flow on the output here is we're really trying to uh, take off the spirit at a rate which we can still get high purity, but we've got enough percentage of spirit falling back down, back down onto the packing that it maintains this uh, these sort of uh, this, this gradient of uh, spirit concentration inside the column.
Okay, so now at this point, we've got our wash inside the boiler. So I've made a, a sugar and water and yeast wash. Pretty simple to do. I don't really need to go into much detail. There's plenty of uh, information out there on how to make a good wash. You attach the lid and the still onto the top of the boiler and just uh, do up the clamps to make sure the lid's airtight. Uh, we also wanna make sure that we turn off this output to begin with. So we start with that ball valve in the closed position. Um, yeah, I should also mention when, you, when you've made your wash, it's a really good idea to do your best to try to clean the wash before you put it in. Um, so what I mean by that is really separate the sediment and the yeast in particular. So if you happen to get a lot of yeast into the boiler, um, if you boil that yeast, the yeast cells will break open, they'll release a lot of sulfides, you've got a lot of, a lot of impurities, which you'll then have to uh, distill out later on. So um, yeah, to save yourself a lot of work, um, yeah, try to use some type of fining agents. There's lots of things you can do to uh, separate the liquid um, from a lot of the sediment and yeast. Um, some people use gelatin. A lot of the turbo yeasts which you use for distilling come with a two-part pack where you add some uh, mixture in there to basically clarify the wash. I would highly recommend using uh, one of the ones that are out there or use just a fining agent. If you chill the entire fermenter, that's another way to do it. You basically chill the whole fermenter and that yeast will fall out of suspension very quickly. So you can stick the whole fermenter in the fridge once you're done and you know the, the yeast will generally uh, form a nice uh, compact um, layer on the bottom of the fermenter. Um, but yeah, definitely by doing that, you'll get a better quality uh, uh, quality wash. The other thing is, once you've filled up your wash inside your boiler here, another little tip is adding some distilling conditioner, something you can easily get from your local uh, homebrew supply store. Um, yeah, just a few drops of that will stop the wash foaming up. Sometimes inside your wash, you've got some of the uh, proteins or, or, or some of the uh, you know chemicals in there can uh, basically affect the surface tension. And then when you start boiling that, they start to froth up. And you can probably imagine if they froth, all this froth starts pushing up the still, it'll affect the quality of your spirit at the end. So that's something also to remember. Anyway, we've got our wash in there. Uh, we hit the elements and once the still starts heating up, uh, you'll notice on the gauge here that the temperature will very, very quickly rise, but then it will start to plateau off. So uh, once the temperature gets above about uh, sort of 50, 60 degrees Celsius, that would be uh, probably in, in the vicinity of 130 degrees Fahrenheit, I think going by memory, you might have to correct me on that one. Um, yeah, once that, once that happens, you wanna start running the cold water through the top of the still head here. So you get your garden hose and then you uh, attach that here and uh, yeah, turn the flow on. Um, yeah, so once the water is running into the still, it doesn't really matter which side you run the water in and out of. These are interchangeable on the cooling part of the still here. Um, but yeah, we wanna, wanna start getting the water uh, cooling so we don't lose any of our vapor out the top. Um, and then we keep an eye on this uh, little probe thermometer here. You might check it every few minutes just to see what it's doing. Eventually, you'll find that with the cooling water here, you'll start getting some spirit uh, condensing on here and coming down, and then it's gonna start forming um, that gradient. Those fractions will start forming in the still uh, of the different purity of spirit. So um, yeah, once you get a stable reading, we know we've reached a sort of level of equilibrium, I guess, inside the column. Um, so you'll notice that we'll, we'll usually form around about 77 to 80 degrees Celsius. So once we're getting a constant reading of 77 to 80, degree, 80 degrees Celsius, that's uh, that's uh, equivalent of 170 to 176 uh, Fahrenheit, uh, roughly. Um, yeah, and once we get that for a few minutes, we know that we're ready to start collecting our spirit. So what we're gonna do is uh, we get that level, then we open this up, and then we put a container under this side. So in this instance, you can use, a lot of people use glass containers and that type of thing, but uh, I've got a lot of kegs lying around, so I just generally use a stainless steel keg, and I'll start collecting the spirit in here. Now the first 50 mils that comes out, you wanna make sure you collect that and throw it away because there could be some potential, there could be some methanol in there. There's not usually uh, much methanol, especially when you're using some of the turbo yeasts and you're using dextrose to ferment. Um, yeah, you generally don't make much methanol or very little or no methanol at all. Um, but uh, it's a good idea just as a precaution, you collect that and throw it away and then you can start taking the bulk of your runoff and keep collecting the spirit. One thing you'll also notice is, um, yeah, after all the alcohol has come out, come out and you've collected everything in your uh, collection vessel here, you'll notice the temperature on the uh, little probe thermometer here will start to increase. So once it goes up by about one whole degree Celsius or approximately two degrees Fahrenheit, 
um, then that means your 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 alcohol uh, is pretty much all gone and then it's time to, to stop the process and turn it all off. Um, now you'll notice when I uh, I mentioned that you really look when I mentioned that you're not looking for a specific temperature on this display here because there's uh, sometimes uh, the, these little probe thermometers can be off by a very small amount uh, and also the way you place the probe as well if it's not stuck all the way into the hole or something like that we don't want to look for a specific temperature we're looking for a temperature change and that's really uh, the key to this whole process is where we're looking for where the temperature forms a plateau and stables out and it could be anywhere as I said between um, 77 to 80 degrees Celsius um, uh, and uh, and then when that temperature increases by a whole degree centigrade or two degrees Fahrenheit that's when we know it's time to stop collecting so not looking specific temperatures we're looking for temperature changes well that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it if you've got any other questions don't be uh, shy send us an email sign up to our Facebook page if you can uh, or otherwise uh, yeah subscribe to our YouTube clip if you want to see more videos from us anyway thanks for your time guys and I'll see you later